Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this week's edition of Photoshop for Video. Today, we're going to continue our look at designing lower third graphics. In last week's episode, we started out designing and we built the bar and texture and general shape for our lower third. Today, we're going to pick it up. Now, if you want to pick up the design files, you can head on over to creativecow.net and find them there. Let's jump in. So we've got everything built out here. We've got our basic lower third bar, and we want to finish this out with some text. Let's go ahead here, and let's simplify things. I'm going to select all of these layers and choose Command-G or Control-G for group and place them together. And notice that isolates the bar to one single layer group. And we'll call that bar texture. Now, let's add our first line for the lower third. Select the text tool. You can do that by pressing T. And then click and drag to define where your text goes. So we're going to define the name here. And this first text layer will be the name of the subject. Now, it's a good idea when you're building a lower third template for a particular show to find the longest name in that show and then even add a few extra characters. In this way, you're ensuring that the lower third template you're building will actually work for all the names in a particular program. We've got that font selected, and here's the cool thing a lot of people don't realize about Photoshop. First off, you've got scales here that work really easily. Just drag to the right, and you can scale the text up. Next, though, is the ability to try out different fonts. So if you just park in the font field here and use the up or down arrow, you could step through all the different fonts you have loaded until you find one that works well for the particular project you're working on. Also, if you click, you'll see that there's a long list and you get a nice preview as you're designing. So that works really well. Let's go ahead here and choose a little bit of a heavier weight. There we go. And that's worked out well for us. We can go ahead and position that where we want. Now the text is still vector, so if you feel like it, you can just press Command or Control T and scale that up a bit as needed. To make that text easier to read, we're going to go ahead and add a contrasting edge. Now when you use text in video, you generally have to take in mind the fact that we have phenomena called type on pattern. And what this means is, unlike in the world of print, where you're putting text over a solid color, usually white, video is going to move. So behind those letters might be dark and light areas that keep moving around. To combat this, we add the contrasting edge, usually with a drop shadow or a stroke. Both can be easily done right here in Photoshop with the Layer Effects menu there. So I just put a slight drop shadow, and if I wanted to put a little bit of a stroke, we could do that, but you want to make sure that you don't get too thick or gaudy with it. So let's just use a value of two pixels there to help that lift off the page and I'll click OK. Now we need to add the next line, which is going to be the title. So I'll grab the text tool here again, click and drag for point text. Now that selected the current layer, so let's just adjust the size of that. That worked out pretty well. Click in a free area that's nice and clear, and we'll start to type. Now, if it hits the block there, it might wrap off the edge, but you can go ahead and click and drag to redefine the block and make more room. Additionally, you're going to want to take advantage of a couple of options here. Now, we don't want to use the exact same font or weight as this top here, so I'll go ahead and change this to a bold italic and make it smaller. If that's still not working, we could try a new face altogether. That seems a little bit busy with these two together. So let's go ahead and just try a different face. We'll go with something a little more condensed. Let's stick here with a sans serif, and we'll try bold. That's OK. Keep going through some of our options here. And let's go with more of a condensed weight. That looks pretty good. Now, I want to take advantage of one important feature, which is edit, check spelling, because it's going to tell me that of course, I misspelled the word veterinary. So let's just go ahead and fix that. And now the spell check is complete. That worked out really well. I'm going to mix in a different color, double click, click on the color well here, and select a very light blue from the bar. That's complimentary. 
And let's just lighten that up a bit. There we go. So we have just a slight color in that. And then we'll reuse the same drop shadow and stroke. I could just right click and choose copy layer style and come up here and say paste layer style. There we go. They're both applied. That looks really good. Let's select both layers with a shift click and we'll choose align left. Now they're aligned. Notice we're well within the action safe area here, so that's good. And I'll choose file place and grab the logo for the program. There we go. Brings it in. Drop that into place. It's a vector file so I can scale it. Position it. Notice I'm not as worried about title safe. I could just keep that inside the action safe area because it doesn't have to be red. And that'll work out pretty well. Put a slight bevel on that so it stands off the page just a bit. Set that to an emboss. That looks good with a gentle drop shadow. Click OK. And now we're just about set. We've got our lower third built. We've got our text on it. What we don't have is our embedded transparency that we need for the video editing program. But Photoshop makes this really easy. All you need to do is turn off the background layers here and have your document set where you want it. Make any final adjustments, nudging pieces into place if you need to. We'll move that over just a little bit. And it looks pretty good. What I then want you to do is choose Window, Actions, and bring up your Actions palette. Now, if the video actions aren't loaded here, no big deal. If you just click on the submenu and choose Video Actions, you can load these. Now, these actions started shipping with Photoshop CS2. I wrote them along with Dan Brown, and we put some things in there that would really help you save some time for common tasks that a video person needs to do. All you do after loading the video actions is choose Alpha Channel. If you're working with an Avid system, you'd use the inverted option. Otherwise, just choose the regular one here and press Play. When you do that, it gives you some instructions. It says, make sure the background layers are turned off and have an over transparency. Click Continue. And what it just did is made the alpha channel. There it is. So this action will save you a lot of time. Notice we have solid opaque areas that are white, as well as transparent areas that are black. And the gray areas indicate different levels of opacity or transparency within the document. This is all set here. And I'll say File, Save As. And the format that I prefer to do is to save this as a layered TIFF. I'll make sure it's got alpha channels and layers. We'll call this lower third end. And we'll save that out. No compression. Do not check save transparency or else the alpha channel will get messed up. Click OK. And we write that. And what we have now is a file completely ready for the video program. Drop this into the nonlinear editing program of your choice or in After Effects. It'll come in as a flattened file with embedded transparency. When you need to make a change, simply jump on over to Photoshop and you've got layers where you can update it. Hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Photoshop for Video. We've got lots more you can check out. And if you want to ask us some questions, head on over to creativecow.net and check out the Photoshop forums. Thanks again.